Hey guys and welcome to The Fish Room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a Species Spotlight. This week we're going to talk about the Blue Emperor Tetra, the Royal Tetra, or Impaecthes cari. And I think they're a really cool little fish. They get just about an inch and a half and they're a really nice complement to a heavily planted aquascape, especially one focusing on a biotope or a wood layout. So let's take a look and I'll tell you more about them. Now because these guys are so active, I've stuck one of the Sarah Onip tabs on the glass here to try and get them to come to the front so that you can really see how beautiful they are. Now these I've only had for about two weeks, so they're not fully colored up. However, there's, there's a few in there that are at maturity where you can see how they get their name, Regal, Royal, Blue, or Purple Tetra. When this fish settles in, it really does get a bluish purple sheen that's really quite lovely. Now these guys are not the best schoolers, though they definitely, definitely appreciate being groups. In fact, they have a reputation of being a little bit nippy if they're kept in too few in numbers. So I would really recommend 10 or more with these guys. And at just under an inch and a half or three and a half centimeters, they're a petite fish allowing you to have a bigger school. Now in the wild, they come from the Madeira Basin in Brazil where they live in sluggish tributaries that are chock full of wood and leaf litter and other organics that stain the water really brown. So you'll get the best coloration from these guys in a tank with a lot of driftwood and tannins. Personally, I really like that look, but I know it's not everybody's cup of tea. I think that this Tetra is exceptionally well suited to setting up a biotype style aquarium. Lots of tangles of driftwood, some fine sand, small pebbles, some leaf litter and cones would make them have a really stunning behavior and allow them to have a very, very natural display. Now they are peaceful despite their reputation and they do really, really well with other Tetras, pencil fish, epistogrammas, hatchet fish. Coriodorus and Otosynclus. Now, they can be challenging to sex. Uh, the females are slightly broader and lessly colored, but the most interesting or obvious way to sex them is to look at their adipose fin. And the adipose fin is that little tiny fin on the top of their body line right in front of their tail fin. And in females, this little fin is red. So that is a good way to be able to sex them from a relatively small size. What's interesting as well is that this is the only fish in this genus, so I would imagine it's likely to be reclassified. We can see some of these larger males that are coming up to the front really have pretty decent color um, and are already exhibiting that purplish hue that they get. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, I'll make sure that I put future videos of these guys so you can see what they look like when they're really settled in. They are a stunning fish. I really, really, really like that strong black lateral line. I think it makes for a really attractive display in a planted aquarium against the green of the plants. All in all, I think these are an interesting, attractive, affordable fish for a heavily, heavily aquascaped aquarium. Now while this little fish comes from Brazil, and it does appreciate warm water, I find them to be extremely versatile as far as pH, though most people do prefer to keep them in a softer environment, especially since they appreciate the driftwood and tannins so much. As always, thank you guys for your continued support. Make sure you hit the notification bell and stop by all my social media so you don't miss any of my upcoming speaking engagements, giveaways, or just general news on the hobby. Let me know below if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions.